Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I'm here at the Heise studio, and joining me right now, I have Namdi Aranye. He is an author of the Disrupting Africa Encyclopedia. So it is great to have you here. We get to pick your brain about disruptive technology in Africa. How cool. Thank you very much for having me. It's very exciting to be on your show. Awesome. Well, okay, so let's start out. I mean, we'll get to the health tech stuff, cool. but I want to talk about the encyclopedia first. Why you decided to write this? Yeah, I mean, it was quite simple for me. So when I wrote my first book, uh, Disrupting Africa, that was about four or five years ago. Okay. The challenge I had is I knew it was going to be dated very soon, right, because there's all this new technology coming out. And the question I asked myself was then, what's the best platform to do this? And I chose an encyclopedia. My team and I chose an encyclopedia because we believed it was the most um, referenceable and objective platform you can use. Cool. Um, that's why we set up the encyclopedia. Okay, that's awesome. So, all right, give us a sense of what you've discovered as you're curating all this information. And so you've really like gone out, you're looking at all the startups, yeah. you're looking at the investment ecosystem. Yeah. What's going on in Africa from a tech standpoint? It's very exciting times, and, and if you look at the statistics, you know, population growth uh, on, the, on the rise, we look at anthropology, what people are doing, we look at the tech space, it's just exciting times to be in Africa. Um, and this, I think, is a defining moment for the globe. And when you give, give you some context, in the next 10, 15 years, Africa would have the largest working population in the world. Right? So 40% of the working, world's working population would be in Africa. And that it could either be an asset or a liability. Right? So the reason why it should be an asset is because you can't have 40% of the world's working population being a liability to the globe. And the way to move Africa forward is through tech. Mm -hmm. So what most tech entrepreneurs are doing now is to solve genuine African problems, okay. whether it's health, financial services, education, coming up with very novel ways to solve this problem. What's the tech scene like in Africa? Is, is everybody on their phone? Are most of the solutions mobile driven? Yeah. Give me an idea of what's going on there. Are you guys talking about 5G like the rest of the world? Yeah. Like what's going on? Give me some of the hot topics. I mean we had 5G a while back. Oh right? really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, we had it a while back. It's not new news to us. And you've got to give, get context. So in Africa, we don't have the legacy infrastructure that most countries have. Mm -hmm. We literally skipped, you know, landline, broadband, and went straight to the mobile phone. And I think the penetration rates for mobile now is, you know, one is to one, if not over 100% penetration. So mobile is the platform that most innovations are developed on, from apps down to even your basic USSD or SMS type technology. And that's been very exciting for, for Africa, right? And what's happening now, we're seeing once the mobile phone penetration is, is, has been sorted, the new industries popping up, especially a one the, a hotbed now is the financial services one, mm -hmm. using mobile phones to pay. Okay. So, you know, what, you know in most um, 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 the Western countries now, you've got tap to pay, you've got apps to pay. But we've been doing this for like two, three decades now. We've got what's called mobile money, where you don't have to have a bank account, you can just use your, your pretty much your phone is your bank your bank okay. account, uh, and that's been successful in quite a number of African countries, particularly Kenya. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm curious about from the t health side of things. What kinds of things are you seeing in terms of disruptive technology in healthcare? Yeah, uh, it's very exciting in, in the healthcare space, as you, as you can imagine. You know, so, some places in Africa are remote and you can't, it's hard to reach. But what's happening is using technology to, to access these um, remote areas. And one of my favorite innovators in the health space is a company called Vula Mobile. And it was started by an ophthalmologist. Um, and his challenge was he would have to drive, say, four hours into rural uh, South Africa. And then he'll tell, oh, Grandma, you've got cataracts and you've got to drive four hours back. Yeah. And then Grandma's got to drive four hours to his, his, um, his clinic. It's just not a very efficient system. So he, he developed an app. Think about an ophthalmologist developing an app, yeah. right? Um, which a rural health worker can scan using ret retinal technology, scan the Grandma's eyes and pick up that she's got cataracts and book her into the closest um, clinic, so okay. she doesn't have to drive the four hours. All of a sudden, that it just becomes a more efficient uh, sure. setup. And he's last last I heard, he's you know his him and his team have done over a hundred thousand operations in the back of that, and expanding into other countries, and even in the UK now. 
That's ins- that's really exciting. I'm thinking to myself. So there's it seems like there's that is one of those um, a mobile application that helps with diagnostics. What else yeah. are you seeing in terms? Are you seeing um, care delivery, telehealth? Yeah. Like give us give me the, an idea. I want to paint oh, me a picture of what's so exciting many. down so there. Like, uh, and it does. And the other thing I was wondering too is does it vary depending on wh- which African country you're yeah. in? Because I mean there's quite a diversity, right? Absolutely. So so you, you you're actually right. No, um, Africa's got 44, 54 countries. I'll give an example in antenatal care. We've got companies that use uh, technology to help you know pregnant mothers who would never have access to to doctors. You get SMS based or app based information. Say okay, this this uh, stage in your your um, uh, your pregnancy, you've got to do X Y Z. We've got technology now that actually has come out of Uganda where you can sort of scan, just scan your finger, and it can tell you actually predict and tell you whether you've got some. Um, from illnesses, I think it, it can detect malaria okay. without having a malaria to, test. Yeah, yeah, we have a malaria test, right? And we have that. You know, we have companies such as um, Access Mobile that's gone global now in the states. Actually, yeah, they're yeah, now yeah. based in the states. Uh, that come has come out of East Africa, started by a Ghanaian guy, where they've got SMS-based technology to help you with your bookings with hospitals mm-hmm. and your medication and dispensing your make medication. And I've seen a varied. Um, uh, use case of technology to solve multiple health uh, uh, issues. What, however, is a common theme is it they they are all trying to solve the same thing. Which is? Um, which is just access to access. good health. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Access to good health on, on the mobile. Okay. Um, what's the like? Are there hot health? tech startups down there? Like, what are the hottest health tech startups? Or are there some of the ones you've already named? Yeah, some of the ones I've already named. But, you know, where I'm seeing the hotbeds really in, in Africa, in a few countries, Nigeria is one of them. Okay. Uh, what are they known for in Nigeria? So it's Nigeria. Financial services are becoming a big thing on yeah. the continent. Um, and when you put it in context, uh, if you haven't got financial services, at least to pay, right. you can't do anything. Can't do anything. Right? Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, so after the mobile revolution, I'm seeing lots of financial services, money transfers, and tech in, in health is becoming a big thing. Right? Okay. And that, when you, it sort of makes sense when you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you're just trying to solve the basic stuff: health, education, agri. Uh, there's a lot of tech coming out in 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 the education space. Um, and I see Nigeria is a key country, Ghana as well. Okay. Kenya has always been in the forefront okay. uh, uh, with mobile money. And there's a lot of tech startups that have built their, um, their designs on the back of mobile money in Kenya. You can't talk about entrepreneurs without talking about funding for entrepreneurs. Yes. So give me a sense of what's going on there. You guys set up, like, so in the U.S., we've got angel money, we've got yeah. venture capital money, we've got institutional investors. Who is paying for the development and yeah. scale up for these services out there in Africa? That, that's a good question. Um, and what, what I see is happening, because I'm so fortunate to talk to quite a number of innovators, entrepreneurs across multiple continents, there was a time where the, the common theme was access to funding. And the more I thought about it, the more I did the research, they were not really saying we need more funding. They were saying they need more access to markets. Okay. Right. So, what, what so customers. Customers, more yeah. More access to customers. Yeah, okay. that's it, right? right? Because once you get paid... So where are customers. they getting their money? They don't yeah. need any money. So, so, uh, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So, so the, what, what I saw, the, the theme was they would be quite successful in their own country of domicile, and they got to the, to the point where they wanted to expand beyond borders, right? And that's where the challenge came. So they right. needed growth capital. On the continent, there's access to seed capital, you know, there are lots of incubators, lots of angel investors, a lot of those, right? But not enough VC type funding. Um, uh, a growth capital. Okay, right? so going from that early stage to like a, a, a later stage that's startup, it. that's that. Like that's where between the, gap is. the the seed and the, is it between the seed and the A or between the A and the B? Uh, between the A and the B. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's like it. a worldwide problem. I'm not uh, going to lie to you. Yeah, I, I think it is. You're right. You know, and it that, really is. And that's where the problem is. And most of them, most of the, the approach that, and the, what works is really how do you help those innovators move across borders, and that's where the growth capital is needed. But what I'm seeing now is a lot of uh, interest from non-African VCs. Um, I've seen a lot of interest from Silicon Valley. Uh, quite a number of um, tech investments from Silicon Valley. Asia is starting to invest in Africa. I'll uh, give you an example. I know Mark Zuckerberg invested in a company called Andela out of Nigeria that provides um, 
top talent, developing talent for uh, or coding talent for non-African companies, right? Okay. So it's much cheaper to do in Africa than yeah. say in the US. And Mark Zuckerberg invested in that. Uh, Jack Ma from um, from Asia, Alibaba, yeah. did a tour last year investing in, in African tech startups. So you can see a lot of int interest, interest coming yeah. in from outside. Um, which I think is going to foster that VC, VC type capital. Okay, I do have a lot of VCs that watch me. So if if any of those are out there with the A between the A and B money, if they want to get into Africa, I, I almost wonder if part of it is just knowing who to get in touch with or how, how to come into that market or yeah. which country to come into. Where do you start? Yeah. So what's your advice for an investor who who might have that kind of funding who could help your guys scale? Yeah. How do they get in? Uh, it's it's hard, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's why I do what I do. And if if you were VCs out of Silicon Valley or in Asia, you want to come to Africa, there's just no content, right? And part of what I'm doing is to provide people that content. I think the easiest way, aside from clear contacts and me or going on the encyclopedia, the easiest way is to spend some time understanding Africa. Okay. Um, Definitely coming in with just the money is not it. You'll, you'll get burned very easily. But if you understand the context of what people are trying to solve, then it's easy to find tech startups to, to solve that. And I think they're, they're big problems, big challenges to solve. Um, and we have the innovators to solve it. Yeah. Uh, the question should be, how do we support them to solve it without coming to tell them what to do because you've got the money? And I think if any VCs are interested in, in definitely participating, a good place to start is to understand the landscape okay. first. All right, we're excited to see what co what comes out of this African ingenuity. I love it. Yeah. And I love talking about tech disruption around the world because I think there's so much for us to learn by yeah. watching the way other countries and other continents take on these same challenges. So thank you so much for stopping by. If people want to find the encyclopedia, what's the easiest way to find it? Uh, the easiest way is just to go to the website disruptingafrica.com or just type in Disrupting Africa Encyclopedia yeah, and it'll, it'll, it'll pop, pop up. right up. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for stopping by. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm Jessica Damasa here at Heise's studio for WTF Health. Thanks for watching.